like to give you some empowering information that I hope you will feel as excited about it as I do. Before that, I would like to do a little exercise with you. I'd like to start from this side, and I would like to ask the first person sitting and going to each third person to stand up or raise your hand. Go ahead, don't be shy. Everybody, please. It's an, it's an audience exercise. Please, don't be shy. <clears throat> okay, we're getting there. Those of you who are standing, you are at risk of having dementia if you live long enough in your life. Keep standing. I'm not finished. Please keep standing. Now the next person standing, to that person, stand up, please, or raise your hand. Go ahead. Don't be shy. This isn't your exercise for the day. You either have diabetes or you're at risk of having diabetes at some point in your life. The next person to that person, please stand. Keep standing, please keep standing. This is a group activity. I'm trying to get a little movement here. I don't want anybody sleeping through my talk. Okay, these folks, you either have had cancer or you're at risk for having cancer at some point in your life. The people that are still standing, you are at risk for some form of cardiovascular disease. You can sit down, please, thank you. <clears throat> if you didn't realize it already, this country has an epidemic of chronic diseases. Did anybody not know that? Anybody? Okay, good. The concept that I'm going to present to you tonight is nothing new, it's nothing novel. This has been around longer than our calendar. Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, said, let food be your medicine. James Lind the captain of the British Navy, the Royal Navy in the 1700s, when the British was dominating the world, <clears throat> excuse me, discovered that lemons, limes, and oranges could be used to prevent and cure scurvy. This was 200 years before vitamin C was even identified. Does, everybody, does anybody know that? Did anybody know that? A few people did? Good. So what I'm talking about tonight is using nutrition as a foundational approach to health. Using nutrition, the power of nutrition to be healthy. There are lots of concepts that go into the idea of being healthy. <clears throat> In my opinion, the first three, the most important three, are eating a predominantly whole food plant-based diet, exercising most every single day, if not every day, and supplementing with nutrients that are typically not found in the modern diet because we have had <clears throat> problems with our food supply over the last 100 years, and so it's important to supplement with some key nutrients, and that's what is the most exciting part of my talk that I will talk about tonight. Now, if you do not understand or if you have no appreciation or value for nutrition in your life and how that affects your health, I would say to you that it's probably not the least of which due to all the funding, all, I'm sorry, all the advertising, all the marketing money that's been spent by the pharmaceutical industry to convince you that pharmaceuticals are needed to manage your health, right? There are millions and billions of dollars. I mean, just turn on the TV, you see commercials all the time promoting the use of drugs. This is not our health. This is treating and mitigating chronic disease. At the same time, we are spending over $2 trillion every year on what we call our healthcare system. Would everybody do me a favor in this room tonight? Stop calling it a healthcare system. We treat and manage chronic diseases primarily in this country. This is not a healthcare system. Healthcare, what does that mean to you? What does that mean to any of us? It doesn't mean taking pharmaceuticals. It means caring for our health. Pharmaceuticals are used to treat and mitigate and <clears throat> manage chronic diseases. Look at this graph. We are spending all this money, and yet somehow we are not even close to the, to the leading country when it comes to life expectancy. There are so many other indicators of quality of life. We're not even close to the top. Why are we spending all this money? How are we spending all this money on an unsustainable effort when we are not even close to the leading countries with some of these markers of quality of life? <clears throat> you are probably also thinking that you are predisposed or you are a victim of your genes. That is absolutely a fallacy. Genes are like a gun. They do nothing until they take in information from the environment and then they do something. And we hope that they do something good for us, not express a disease. We want them to express good things, <clears throat> excuse me, so please don't think that you are a victim or you are, have an inevitable situation when it comes to your genes. Folks, there is also no magic bullet. 
There is no genius at the University of Miami. There is no genius at Harvard, Yale, anywhere else coming up with a magic bullet for our pill-popping society to prevent and reverse uh, conditions that have <clears throat> resulted in 30 or 40 years of bad behavior on our part. You have to manage what you do every single day. If you do not know these numbers, roughly 70% of our nation now is either overweight or obese. Does anybody not know that? And this is a very recent phenomenon. This has only happened within the last 50 or 60 years. Ladies and gentlemen, our genes just didn't decide to say in the last half century, it's time for us to get fat and sick. <laughs> Seriously. I'm not even trying to be funny with that. But guess what? It rises, it, it, the rise in this overweight obesity trend parallels what has happened with the fast food industry. We have this enormous rise in all these companies now that produce fast food. So what happened to us? <clears throat> we are now overfed and undernourished. We're eating food-like substances, as Michael Pollan says. He said it very brilliantly. Food-like substances. It's no longer food. And even the food we eat now today, even if it's good food, chances are if you don't buy organic, <clears throat> you're buying food that's been genetically modified. It's got all kinds of herbicides, pesticides, etc. added to it. So the quality of our food today is not what it was 100 years ago. <clears throat> all this leads to chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation is rampant throughout the medical literature. It's, it's known now to be a predisposing factor to all kinds of chronic diseases, the ones that I just mentioned. And I'll talk a little bit about how we can prevent that here in just a second. My colleagues and I, what we are doing loosely is <clears throat> part of the, the branch of science called glycomics. You've probably heard of proteomics. You've probably heard of genomics. Well, we're doing things in the, in the field of glycomics. So we're studying monosaccharides. We know that these monosaccharides are very important <clears throat> to our foundation of health. <clears throat> Particularly mono, mannose, I'm sorry, is, is a sugar, is a, is a saccharide that's found in aloe vera. This aloe vera has been used, aloe vera has been used for thousands of years by humans, right? I mean, who, everyone knows that aloe vera, is top, you think of it as being used topically, of course, when you have a burn or a cut or something like that. But actually, it's just as, impo it, it just as potent, if not more potent, when you take it, take it orally. So what we know now through the study of glycomics <clears throat> is that many molecules of mannose are needed for the bioengineering of life, for all the cellular synthesis functions, everything that you need to produce good products. So when you think about analogy of, uh, of a manufacturing process, an assembly line, you need certain nutrients, certain raw materials to go in, <clears throat> and that's exactly what we do when we give mannose in, in high doses or high amounts that normally you would not get in the average diet. So you may be thinking to yourself, Okay, that's great. So what do I do? How, how can I get these things? Well, again, I just mentioned aloe vera. If you have, um, I don't know, I think you guys some, got some sort of a, a goodie bag, if I can call it that, some sort of a sample. I think you were given something, and you have a product that I'll mention just briefly, very quickly, but I'll talk about that when I get to the results of this uh, a study that we just published earlier this year. So aloe vera, again, is very high in this particular nutrient. It's very crucial because of the way it works in all of our cells in every aspect of our lives. Hospice. Is there anyone in this room who does not know what hospice is? Hospice is the last step to the funeral home, right? If you get sent to hospice, you're on your way to death, right? Okay, good. I didn't hear any no's yet, so that's good. <clears throat> so a colleague of mine had a patient who had gone through all the standard conventional treatments. He had gone through surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. He was given up for dead. He was sent to hospice. He had metastatic tumors throughout his body, particularly in the liver. If you look at this graph, you can see in July of 1999, after he had had all the conventional treatments, he got started on the monosaccharides. A year later, you can see how much the tumor was reduced. Folks, this man is still alive today. How about that? Yes. Now, I know some of you may, th may be thinking this is medical heresy. It's not medical heresy. This is giving the body the, the raw materials it needs to function properly. This is allowing the body to do what it is intended to do. I don't care if you believe in evolution or creation or some combination. This is much more fundamental than treating disease with drugs. <clears throat> this man is still alive today. Hallelujah for him. <clears throat> the study we published earlier this year is going to blow you away too, I think, because every, if you haven't already been affected by somebody with Alzheimer's disease, you probably will. <clears throat> we are an aging population. 
There are going to be so many more people coming down with Alzheimer's disease. There is currently no treatment, no cure, no preventive strategy for Alzheimer's disease. We took a sample of people with moderate to severe Alzheimer's disease. We put them on these monosaccharides. After 9 to 12 months, they started having improvements in memory and cognitive functioning. Show me something else like that in the literature. The best that drugs can do are de delay decline for a couple of months. We actually had people coming out of the ether. We actually had people coming back, <laughs> remembering their sons and their daughters, remembering their significant other, remembering their spouse. I had caregivers calling me and saying, John, I can't believe it. My wife is back. She remembered my name. It gives me chills just even telling you guys. It's powerful stuff. <clears throat> what we also showed, I'm sure everybody knows there is a, a debate about embryonic stem cells. We have taken that debate out of the equation because what we showed is that these monosaccharides stimulate the proliferation of their own adult stem cells. There's no need for transplantation or for embryonic stem cell work. We've showed that these nutrients, again, give the raw materials the body needs to function properly. We are constantly <clears throat> assimilating cells, particularly the adult stem cells, and we want these guys to migrate out where there's damage and repair it. We also showed, if you remember back to the inflammation slide, that we reduced inflammatory factors as well. So not only did we improve cognitive functioning, we reduced inflammation, and we proliferated adult stem cells. Show me another study in the literature like it. There's nothing else out there for people with Alzheimer's disease. <clears throat> Finally, you have the power. It's up to you. You do not have to think, I'm going to be dead from chronic disease. You can do something about it. I've given you some tools. I've given you some information. <clears throat> All you have to do is decide right here that healthcare is what you do every single day. It's what you do day after day on a consistent basis. It's not going to a clinic or a hospital once a year and having your blood drawn and having your blood pressure checked. You can take ownership of it. I've given you some tools to do it. Thank you for your attention.